Regenerative medicine is an exciting new field with the potential for providing better lives for millions of people. From cut nerves to damaged hearts, regenerative medicine may have the answers to restoring victims of disease and accidents to their once healthy state. But what is it exactly? Regenerative medicine is a scientific field that aims at developing new approaches and tools to promote tissue regeneration and also trying to understand the basic principles and mechanisms. So it is very important for the regenerative medicine field to understand what are the basic set of uh, cues, um, and including environmental cues, biological cues, and cellular cues in the particular tissue environment that stimulates the tissue growth. Here at the Institute for Nanobiotechnology at Johns Hopkins University, researchers are working to provide these answers to a number of clinical applications. So one approach to tissue engineering is, is, is re-engineering or repairing uh, damage to the central or, or peripheral nervous system. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is again to recreate chemical signals, biological signals that, that nerve cells, uh, broad, the broad class of, of nerve cells that are necessary to, to repair uh, would be able to have the same types of chemical interactions with the native environment to a scaffold that will present the same kind of chemistry. Uh, this often involves a very complex uh, molecular and polymer engineering approach uh, to vary chemistry, to vary porosity, to vary mechanical properties in a way that cells then think they are interacting with a native substrate or a native surface that would be necessary to encourage uh, the regrowth of new neural cells or establishing reconnections uh, among these cells. So it's known that certain cells, particularly neurons, are sensitive to electrical stimuli and their ability to regenerate can be influenced by the presence of an electric field. However, electrical conductors are typically made of metals and other kinds of inorganic complexes. So this is an issue since cells will see these materials as foreign objects and therefore won't like to adhere to them. So using the chemistry that we can present on these materials uh, in terms of interfacing with cells, we then create the, the artificial function uh, uh, by way of, of incorporating the electronic or the optical materials. And then these then are, are carried into the, into the final overall scaffold material. Regenerative medicine is not limited to damage to the nervous system. Another group at the Hopkins Medical Campus utilizes a different approach to treat cardiovascular disease. Stem cell therapy, or using stem cells to stimulate and direct tissue growth, is a major focus of regenerative medicine. However, they don't tend to survive very well if you just directly inject them into the body. So we have to find a way to protect these cells. And we began by exploring cell encapsulation techniques for cardiovascular disease. And one type of treatment involves delivering stem cells that will stimulate the regrowth of blood vessels in that area of the heart. So in our group, using a technology known as microfluidics, we've developed a platform that can trap only a few cells into these very small and uniform bubbles, about 50 microns in size, that will allow us to deliver the cells directly to the heart muscle. I mean, the most exciting thing is we, we see that the cells in culture, they seem to be very happy when they're just one or two cells in these capsules. So it looks like we may have a much more effective therapy, potentially, if we can actually produce these in high throughput. For many of the scientists here at Johns Hopkins, institutions like the IMBT are not only useful, but instrumental to providing answers to these medical problems. Oh, I think um, by nature, research has to be interdisciplinary, in, at least in medicine. Um, I don't think that any one group really has an, a broad enough breadth of knowledge in order to really solve these problems. So all of this would require the collaboration uh, among scientists, engineers, and clinicians. And in many cases, even a marketing perspective, in the, if one wants to think about eventually translate and this to apply this to uh, a clinical setting to benefit patients, public, patient population, someone has to make this into a product. So with such a complicated task, it is very helpful to have an institution like IMBT to uh, pull different resources together, uh, not only just from the training perspective, but from a um, scientific um, team management perspective, to at least get uh, the people from the, with different set of, uh, of uh, agenda or expertise and, um, and different set of thinking 
to come together to solve a common problem. Um, that is the only approach that I personally view will make it successful.